Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, fam. Yes, whenever you are catching this video, hey, salutations, greetings, hello, hello, family, how y'all been doing? That's right, come on into the room, come on in the room, how was your day? How was your work day? How was your off day? Hell, and if you retired, how was the day, honey? Did y'all get y'all selves together? Did y'all relax? Or the ones that had to go hump it like us, like me, the working uh, clientele of the fam. We had to get out there in that bad weather today. For those who are living in Atlanta, yes, we had a tornado watch up in here for about, when it was, I think it was probably from 6 a.m. to about 7 p.m. Um, tore up some stuff in the rural areas uh, going towards, I guess, Savannah. Because my cousins stay in uh, Crawfordville. I don't know if y'all know where that is, but that's out 20 East. Terra Ferro County is where they call it. She said it was some tornadoes was bouncing around uh, down where they stay at. Like Social Circle, Rutledge, Georgia. Well, like you're going to Augusta, Georgia or Richmond County. Something like that. And, uh, you know, we stay in the heart of the uh, Decatur, Atlanta, you know, Fulton County and DeKalb County. And it was just raining out there. It was just a, a piss poor type of environment out there today. You know, it's rough because folk already can't drive. But then they mix rain with it. Can you see cars just trying to hydroplane and everything? Because they still think they can go the same speed out there when they know it's rough. It's rough, okay? Because at first they said we, had, we were supposed to have some snowflakes come or whatnot. But honey, it was kind of still like it could have been a tornado type season or weather yesterday. More so than today. But it was kind of ugly. But this this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Okay, we're going to go. We're going to weather through it. Yes, we are. We're going to put on our galoshes for those that don't know. Those are my boots, rain boots. Okay. And get ourselves together, be snugged up with the hat and the umbrella. Or hell, just dash real quick to your car. <laughs> okay, for those that don't like to bundle up. But whoa, whoa, whoa. When you get that cold, get the head cold, you're going to wish you did bundle up. But yes, family, y'all relax now. Y'all got y'all something to eat. Y'all got y'all something to drink. Y'all and y'all favorite chill are curled up in y'all sofa. On y'all sofa. Because it's time to get into this YouTube talking, fam. Yes, we need to talk out. We need to hash out some uh, concerns. Okay, because you know my curiosity and my nosiness just won't let me wait. Okay, I had to wait a long time to come talk to y'all. Shoot, y'all had to get home from work. I had to get home from work. See what the Bible logical fan was up to what bills i need to pay you know because pay that tomorrow and you know have a damn chance seem like it go to bills like when do we have time to just put the shit on what we want to put the shit on okay but i guess that's called mortgage car notes utilities savings and any other bills that may come up okay that's just living life why do we ask to get grown when we children? Why we just can't stay children? All right, but I guess we wouldn't experience the wonderful things that come with adulthood. So I said that to say this, or say this, I should say, welcome. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, Deb Snails 48 World, please do so at this time and continue to like and share my videos. Okay, but we're going to get into the story that I was just too tired to do last night. I couldn't do it, y'all. I couldn't do it. Shit, that bed was calling my name, all right? Yes, and I want to say, give another shout-out to Rita. I think it's Rita Hopkins. She's one of the fam over here. She be telling me, telling it like it is. Be on my ass sometimes, just like uh, Marisol, you know. Uh, I have to shout out my family. When they be up in them comments telling me this, that, and the third, really communicating with me like fam do. I got to shout my sisters, my cousins, my aunties. Hell, I might be they grandmama. <laughs> I don't know what they look at me like, but I think they claiming claiming me as their sister, so I'm cool. I I'm just building so many people that like me, and I, I, I love it. I love it because you know you, you don't like all your family members. You know you don't. You you show sure don't. You talk about them like a dog. You go to the uh, reunions. You sit there with them, and you be like, why are they here? Why are they here? Here? Why am I here? Have not to deal with this person. You know what I'm saying? But we gotta do what we gotta do. Okay, we gotta live this life. We gotta run this life. Cause we were born into a family okay and like we could pick and choose but we do have some that are not 
our biological family, but we treat them like they was. Okay, because that's called love. That's what the Lord gave us. And it's free. Love. So share it. Share it amongst yourselves, especially in that chat area where we congregate together. And um, we we get uh to liking each other and, and expressing and stuff. And you know, sometimes you gotta uh, disagree. You gotta agree to disagree on some topics that I share with you all because I ain't right. You ain't right. I ain't wrong half the time, and you ain't wrong half the time. So you have your opinion. I have mine, and we all need to just respect it, and we just dwell in the midst of it all and see how other people think. Okay, and that's just how we get down over here at the fam, the family affair. Okay, but anyway, like I said, we're gonna be talking about Kenya more tonight, y'all. And this video that's surfacing, uh, I think it's for an upcoming episode that's coming up in season twelve. They basically uh, have a scene where Mark is scouting out someplace i guess for him to host or get started another restaurant here in atlanta you know soho uh i guess it would be called soho too the La the atlanta version or whatnot but it's a cute little area he's trying to promote but uh i don't know why he think he's just gonna have 50 people that's why i said that shit is not real <laughs> Because if your restaurant can only hold 50 people, you need to rethink it again. Okay. He he shouldn't be on struggle if he got a, a nice, well-run established up in New York. Surely, surely. He need to be rolling like Red Lobster. You know what I'm saying? They got many uh, bars uh, area to hang out in. They got the booths. And then they got where you can sit out at a table type set. Hell, po folks. Y'all remember po folks? They renamed the name up here to a folks restaurant. That's some good southern eating. I don't care what nobody say. But anyway. Yeah, he over here looking at a little bit. Almost kind of the size of, uh, not Cynthia Bailey's wine cellar, but I guess you could. Because we ain't really seen all of it. But it's like a little area what they did film when um they showed the proposal of her opening of the wine cellar um, that Cynthia Bailey owns or leases. So I don't know what she's doing over there. But it, it kind of reminds you of that little cookie lady shop. Uh, how to cookie. Um store that they had next door to Cynthia's wine bailey uh wine bailey cellar. Uh it's just like a cute little space. Kinda like an ice cream parlor type setting. That's at least that's the setting that it gave me. You know, you ain't gonna have a lot of people in, you know, uh ice cream parlor. Just a little few people here and there, you know. But it's more of a get out your car, come order and, and get back in your car with the ice cream type of thing. But yeah, he don't. He gonna have fifty folks up in there. I said, uh, uh. Mark ain't trying to make no money. This is just fictitious foolery they giving us with a lot of fuckery and fakeness going on. Okay, did I get my f's in there? Fake, foolish, fraudulent, and fuckery. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's got my uh, four f's in there. Okay, but yeah, I gave another this little scene where, uh, he's he and he told her. He said he's thinking through his head, so it's almost like he was visualizing Kenya not being there, and he was talking out loud but he was going through the motions in his head of what he wanted to see which kind of was analytical but uh we didn't need to see that shit because it was just really throwing egg on kenya's face frying it up and we make making biscuits biscuits and we just squishing them on kenya's half face and everywhere else we can because that's what he pretty much giving me total disrespect uh no uh apparent what do you call it uh viewership that she was even in the room he was paying her dust just like he was paying her dust when they had that little scene where he called himself mad because she didn't have no eggs or no real breakfast going on and he was trying to uh, feed uh, baby girl Brooklyn and he wasn't paying her no attention while she was trying to cook what she could cook up in that kitchen okay I like Kenya, Kenya, Kenya just gonna let that man go okay because you trying to set him in a pattern where he is deemed to be treating you like like gum on the bottom of your shoe or you don't stepped in some shit and you got to clean it off. That's basically what you're trying to give us how he treats you. But I can see right through it. He's not really that of a good actor. And you damn sure ain't no good actress, okay? So that whole fictitious scene that y'all gave as a, a little teaser, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it one bit because my girl... Well, you ain't from the South. You up North, okay? But y'all claim that the people up North are a little bit more faster and smarter than the people down here in the South, which I beg to differ. I beg to differ all day. We in the South just like to take it easy. <laughs> 
<laughs> y'all up in the north. Like y'all gotta, y'all gotta be running. Y'all gotta be participating in everything and this, that, and third. And I think what she's from Detroit, Michigan, or somewhere up north. So Ken don't know nothing about this uh slow life. It's it's more a season or uh, stroll type of pace we got down here in the south. Okay, we we ain't got we ain't rushing to go not nowhere. Okay, and we didn't like all this traffic coming up. In, in our uh, state, you know, from these northern northerners coming down. And don't get me wrong, I ain't being prejudiced towards no northerners because I got people that stay in Chicago and New York as well. But I'm just saying, you know, when the tough got uh, bad down here in the south, y'all took y'all butts and ran to the north to try and make y'all life. Then y'all trying to come back and settle. Now, who, what? What it kind of mess is that? And that's half my family, too. They came back, spent about 20, 30 years somewhere else, got good jobs up north. Then they cashed in, retiring down here in the south. Now, what kind of shit is that? I be cussing their asses out every time I see them, but I got love for them. <laughs> we be talking some mighty shit on reunion time. You can trust that and believe that. But, uh, yeah, they ran away, and then they coming back trying to call themselves retired here. You know? I said, boy, you either in the struggle or you not in the struggle. But I got a side, boy. You know, I get down like that. I'm sorry, y'all. But we're going to come back. We're going to come back. All right. But yeah, Kenya Moore got this video. And Bob was pretty much uh, advertising it to get us geared up for the episode that's coming up. Um, I think it would be the 9th, if I'm correct. Damn, I ain't got no calendar around here. All I'm saying, January. You know, I'm behind. I'm in my office. I'm Hey, damn, I got training calendars. Okay. But anyway, I think it is the 9th of February. They're going to come back with a new episode for season 12. And we're trotting on, on alone. Okay. But I think this episode is, uh, hopefully it is. Or we still seeing some fights between Kenya and Nene. Hell, I hope it's something. I hope it ain't going to be no snooze fest. And then they're going to give it to us in the last 30 minutes of the show. Right, come on, Bravo. Y'all y'all just fake, fraudulent, and full of fuckery lately. Okay. But I'm, okay, I'm going to give it to you because I still be tuning in like a little nut. And my family be right along with me. Like, why do we? Why are we up here watching this shit? Why are we up here putting all this ratchetness in our mind? And then we think we finna get hyped up and pumped up, and they don't give us nothing. Okay, we be looking for champagne. They giving us coolers. What kind of shit is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, beer money. You know, like you going to the car lot, you want this kind of car. You know you ain't got nothing but beer and cooler money, but you up there trying to eat all champagne and caviar taste. Oh, my goodness. Me and my brother laugh about that all the time. <laughs> we laugh about it all the time, y'all. Woo, child. But anyway. Yes, Kenya up there with Ma trying to interrupt him. And he's telling her. He had already forewarned her that, hey, I'm in my thinking mode. I'm here, there, everywhere. I'm just out loud speaking it. But I ain't paying no attention to you, child. And, you know, she's looking all fragile or she don't know what to do. He keep cutting her off. She keep trying to, you know, jump in the uh, conversation in his mind that he's having out loud. And damn sure ain't winning. But I said, you know, that's your karma, Kenya. Because you remember when you got into Miss um, Kim Zozat trying to tell uh, everybody in social media that you pimped your daughter out for some John Legends tickets? Do you remember that, can you? Then you tried to make Mike, I mean, uh, Matt over there look like an abuser, a, a domestic type abuser from being physical as well as verbal now you got your match you got your husband up there treating you like you don't treated these women and your past former lover mr matt jordan you remember what i'm saying child he playing you like a fiddle that's the role he playing he playing he being a more better actress or actor than you are acting out can you because you just Ooh, child, this man has hit you with the whammy. Okay, do he have a spell on you, girl? Did he do a potion number nine on you, girl? Because in this the scene, they're pretty much showing us uh, right there. I'm talking about this coming up fairly soon or whatever episode. But he's just looking at her, paying her dust, and Kenya's getting frustrated. She act like he ain't listening to her. He ain't taking nothing she's saying uh, to heart. He's just like, basically, shut up, okay? I, I, you hearing, but you making noise i'm hearing you but you're making more noise than you making sense girl he was ooh, frying her up like some good old pancakes with some served up some eggs and some bacon on the side with a fresh order of juice honey he was tan on into her and i didn't feel sorry for her, not one bit because i thought about this thing I said, ain't karma, bitch. She, the one that she called her lover, her best friend, her husband, 
honey, she might have gotten married. And I'm saying that with all fakeness. Okay, her, I know she ain't getting married. But, you know, my family, some of my family members, they really swear that she married. They know for a fact. And I'm going to let them be right, wrong, however. Okay, so they can let me be right or wrong or however. Okay, but yeah, she said up there, wanted the best husband, wanted the best child. And I'm like, okay. And the best with life. So, one out of three ain't bad. Because baby Brooklyn is definitely all yours now. But the the uh, forever after. And the uh, husband. Uh-uh, honey. Uh-uh. Because he just. Whoo, every time he get a chance to make a fool out of you. He does. He does it real well. All right. But then I have to think about what you did to Matt. And what you tried to play a role of what he was doing to you. And then how you treated Cynthia. How you made her feel lesser than. Telling her to shut up or be quiet while you're talking like she's some kind of child. Then we know Candy just got a time. She coming because you already done, uh, told T. And, and got into some situations she told you to be quiet on. But you went on and did what you you famously do you did it your way how burger king said have it your way have it your way yes but mark is all over you like white on rice with some serving up some gravy in between that girl and he eating you up alive okay and it's without uh anesthetic baby you feeling it for real ain't no pain relief because he giving it to you straight all right and what y'all think about mark just a side buddy i think he kind of gay you know, do y'all, do y'all get any sugarness from him on some of these things, these poses he's making? I don't know. He just seemed like he, he a uh, low down low man. I know he's an actor. He ain't with Kenya. He ain't with Kenya, honey. It's all a hoax. Whether my other family members who disagree with me want to believe it or not, they 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 keeping hope alive. They ride and dying for you know. And then she, you know, did evil wrong too. But you don't take much to do evil wrong. But you can't fuss at evil that much. Cause half the time she's pregnant. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time she's pregnant. You can't even do nothing with her. Even if you want to do something with her, you can't really. You can't do it because she with child. Okay, but all the women that can you pretty much say that was against Nene, why are they toasting up with Nene? Why are they toasting up with Nene? Okay, she at the beginning of the season, before the season even came into fruition, you know, she was doing a, a thing with her uh, line with Sally Beauty Salon. She was trying to gear up her Kenya Moore hair products line. And they were breaking news. Tim and Z had caught her out here in Atlanta. And they were asking about Nene. And she said, oh, honey, Nene ain't got no friends on the show. They all side with me. But it looked like toward this middle part of the uh, season going towards the end, you ain't got nobody on your side. Okay? It's just like crickets. See how that was? I didn't say anything. That's what it, is. it seems like going on with you. Kenya, you ain't got nobody on your side. <coughs> okay, I mean, you don't talk Tanya Sounds. You, you're, you're interfering with her livelihood. You know, by her getting some money on the show, you want to ex her out as a friend, but you're just trying to tarnish her, you know, reputation right now. Then you're messing with Yovana, doing all that shit, trying to lie on her, and Yovana ain't said one day she had no audio. She said she had receipts, honey. Receipts could be something written on a piece of paper that somebody gave her, talking about uh, Cynthia real bad and what she said to them, okay? Only Nene was spreading out that lie that it was audio, because uh, if you look at the footage, uh, Miss Yvonne didn't say nothing of a sort that it was a recording, okay? She just said she had receipts. But, uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. But, yeah, yeah, let's get on into this article, okay? It may have some audio. It has some video, but, um... As you can tell, I'm not narrating, so I can't really show it to you. But I don't really want to show it to you either way because it might be a copyright strike. You know what I'm saying? And we need our dollars over here. This is our supplemental income, honey. Get into it. But um, going into the article that was written by um, Alexis Stone, who's a journalist over there, uh, writing articles for Celebrity Insider. She titles her article, Kenya Moore. Uh, or Kenya Moore's fans, I should say, are outraged after seeing this video. And that's the video I was saying with her and Mark calling themselves looking at a little space to bring Soko to here in Atlanta, Georgia. Kind of mimicking the one that's up in New York. And 
you know, he ain't giving Kenya no time to talk or nothing to that effect. But anyway, uh, it goes in the article it says Kenya Moore fans went ballistic after seeing a video that surfaced online. It features Mac Day, uh, Mark Daly, as well as you can also watch it for yourselves below. Someone commented, "He's rude." If you're asking my opinion, let me speak. And another follower said, I would have, I wouldn't have calmly, I would have calmly walked up to him and slapped him. Ooh, such physicalness. Woo-hoo-hoo. Okay, but if you want to go into the shade room, they actually have the video where you can play it as well. But go to Bravo TV. I'm sure you'll catch it. But yeah, he's pretty much making a damn fool out of Kenya and as Teen Twirl say, she too intelligent. She too uh, on point with things. So why is she letting this man run her Teen Twirl? Why is she ain't standing up for her, her rights, herself as a woman? Why is her voice being silenced by her husband? Okay, girl, she ain't Muslim. At least I ain't think she was Muslim, okay? If she's not in that type of culture or religion where the men speak for the women, the women just be silent and, and, and acting like puppets running around there. When has Kenya ever been silent that's my pun intended on this little take of a situation fam talk to me okay talk to me what's going on well i ain't, I ain't really want to hear from all my fans uh my family i want to hear from my family that's team twirl okay i want to know what's going on she can boss up rag up rile up on women but hell she gotta get a little boss with the men sometime too uh but not her man she got uh many um uh, Mark Daly, but she riled up and bossed up on uh the other men she was trying to claim as her boyfriends for the show for a storyline in the past. Y'all remember Walter? Mm-hmm. He went and broke T at V one oh three and cast his opinion on what was going on with Miss Kenya and their fictitious uh relationship they was going on. Yeah, he exposed it with Wanda Smith and um what your name? Yeah, I finna say Tyler Perry. Uh Frank Ski, the morning show. Y'all remember that? Those who live in Atlanta, they know what I'm talking about. But yeah, went on the talk personality radio show here in Atlanta. Uh urban radio station and yes, he went and talked he went and told the dirt on Kenya. Oh, from his perspective, you know what I'm saying? But then, you know, she always have to go and make more I mean Mike uh, I'm not Matt, uh Matt look like a damn fool running around there, a total lunatic. That's what that's part she wanted us to play with that. Not saying he didn't have a lot of anger management type problems he needed to work on, okay? But Kenya made him seem worse than, you know, he couldn't be rehabbed, okay? He was just a lost cause, but yet you screwed this man, and you told us about it. So he was just a good lay for you, but he couldn't do anything else for you, Kenya. But now you got somebody that's gorgeous, model material, got his own business, well established, but he don't want you, <laughs> <laughs> wow how the tables are turned and we are in the war room and right now it is five to zero meaning mark has served you up on the tennis court honey and he keep following against you all right it's a family affair we're gonna get down and we're gonna talk about this situation on uh, why team twirl don't flood her social media uh platform and say leave mark alone stop making him make a fool out of you stop giving him uh tv time okay that's what they should be telling kenya over there instead of uplifting her talking about yes say your marriage and i'm asking what marriage what twilight zone are you people in fam what twilight zone are you in but anyway going back to the article another follower said uh, he's using her for clout. Leave him, girl. He's not the one. And someone else posted this. She did it to people for so long, and now she's timid about it. You see that what I'm saying? Ain't no time for no timidness, no shyness, no boohooing, no woe is me. Hell no. Look what you did to Sheree. You remember y'all were battling about y'all houses. Who had the best chateau? Okay, who had the best more manner? And Chateau Sheree, you remember that little argument? And we know how you did Matt on the show and you remember you were messing around flirting doing too much flirtation with apollo nida phaedra's husband do you remember that girl and do you remember your uh joke of a prank you played by showing up to marlo hampton's wig event do you remember that do you remember cynthia 
when you told her Mike is going to propose to her, you had a premonition, you had, you know, some forethought that he was going to do this. Do you remember telling Tanya? Okay. Or you didn't really tell her. You just kind of alluded to somebody cheating. Somebody husband cheating on them. Somebody fiance cheating on them. Yes. And do you remember Yovana? You trying to lie on Yovana to get her to express some truth. Do you remember Kim Zosiac when you called uh, one of her children out about uh, she pipping her mouth for some John Legend's tickets. Do you remember all of this, can you? But yet, you want us to turn the other cheek and dismiss everything you have done to other people to say, oh, well, it's you. You got a bad proposal. He he didn't give you a proposal. He didn't get on one knee. He didn't get on both knees. He just shoved the ring on your finger, said, take it if you don't. Okay, it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, how can you be a Cinderella wanting your prince to rescue you from everything? And y'all live happy, happy, happy ever after. Well, he ain't even start right first with you. Okay, you hid him from everybody when he got married, when he had a baby, and then you want to thrust him on TV to us, girl, girl. And then the way he is making you look it, look out in these streets as well as on the show. But you want us to have pity. So I know what you're doing, Kenya. You? You're trying to make up this storyline so you can walk away with some pity. Just the same thing as you did with Matt Jordan. Calling him everything. He did everything to you. This, that, and third. You scared for your life. You're trying to get a restraining order. Why don't you do the same thing with Mark, honey? Why don't you do the same thing with Mark? Tell him he's messing with your mental. He's mentally abusing you. And this, that, and the third. But yet, you want to paint this picture for us. To partake of, gravitate to it. Put it in our mind. So every time we see him, we want to make bad comments about him. We want to uh, say, leave him, can you? Uh, and this, that, and the third. He's not good for you. Uh, he's tearing you down. He's bad for yourself and stuff. Uh, self esteem so you can come back later on and say well I tried but I cannot um, I can't go through with it we're going to have to divorce and we're going to have to just co-parent and this that and third that's what you want to say so you will still be looking smelling like a rose at the top and you'll be degrading demasculating your husband or your so called claiming husband for TV shows and ratings okay so <laughs> Let's go back to the article, okay? Because I'm just getting too upset. Um, another fan had said, uh, has another way of saying things and said, well, at least she can say she was married and got a beautiful daughter out of it. Well, hell, she, well, we already know, for those who know over here at the Family Affair, we know she ain't married. So, <laughs> yeah, she got a baby out of it, but she didn't have to make up the storyline. She could have just went on and said she would date Mark and oops one night. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Or she just wanted to have a baby. He wanted to donate the sperm because he wanted a child too. And you could have played it like that. But nah, you want the whole fairy tale, the whole kit and caboodle. And look how you looking out here now. Really? Okay. But anyway. Going back to the article, it says someone else wrote, he did say, let me walk you through my mind. So I guess listening or listen first, then walk him through your mind and each and reach an agreement. Just saying. Then it says, as you know, by now, back in 2019, Kenya broke up with Mark Daly and people said that she's definitely better off without him. But according to the latest reports, it seems that these two might be working on their relationship these days. It's been reported that according to a new interview, fans of the Real Housewives of Atlanta star should not be surprised if she makes some big announcement this year about her private life. And see, my, my thing, Kenya, is if you're trying to work on your marriage and stuff like this, why are you showing this man in the possible worst light don't you know people are still going to be trying to take i'm not but some people are going to be strong team twirl and they're going to like why are you with this man because he's definitely abusing you mentally why would you want to put yourself through it and put your daughter through something where she has to watch you all fight all the time or have major disagreements or y'all not talking and she's you know she's gonna be 
you know, feeling all these rough emotions that y'all going through. And poor baby might think it's something to do with her. And y- y- y'all just, uh, y'all putting a baby girl in a bad situation. But I'm, cause I'm like, if I'm going to stay with my man or I feel I'm going to fight for my man, I ain't going to put my man in no bad light where people could still come to me and watch me on a show that I'm, you know, co-starring in and this man just treating me like a, a third class citizen or not even human at all with how he treat me and how he talked to me. You know what I'm saying? We don't want you to be in a battered syndrome thing, Kenya, but you playing this part, honey. You playing it up so you can exit stage left on his behind and look good in the prospects of your fans. Okay? Because you giving us such poor uh what do you call it? approval or appearances that mark is showing that he's not loving towards you so you're gonna be having an epiphany one day and say no it's not gonna work i'm tired of mark treating me this way as y'all have seen from the many footages of taping how he has treated me and i cannot go i can't go along with this anymore then you're gonna break up with him for good and then move on your happy happily married way now can just give it up all together now stop showing that man act out apart so he could get rid of you and go on back to his life or you could get rid of him still be top dog or seemingly top dog on the real housewives of Atlanta and you don't secure your space again okay no can it ain't working ain't working for me baby because I'm transparent I can see through your shit but anyway going back to the article it says um it's been reported wait a minute she reportedly hinted at the fact that she and Mark are trying to solve the issues between them and that they're on a good track these days. Well, your show couldn't tell me that y'all's on a good track these days by looking at that video, can you? I'm just saying. Uh, or maybe this is after the fact. But see, you don't showed us too much uh in the past that we 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 can't catch up when we end the season because we still gonna be thinking about how this joker treated you at least those that um believe that you actually went through this turmoil um but going back to the article it says uh some fans would like to see them reconcile but others do believe that he has not been treating her right at all and she would be much better off without him uh, would you like to see Kenya and Mark doing everything that's possible to have a future together? Or you also think that he is using her for clout? Now, y'all know how I feel. I think it's a staged event. I think it's a role that Kenya has decided to write up for Mark to play so they can both have, have an exit out. Uh, so she could still look like, smell like a rose. Um, uh, for her part that she's played in this dramatic scene that she don't wrote out. Because you remember she produced stuff, y'all. She produced stuff. Hell, she even made her own little wedding little uh, impromptu video that she was going to try to market a sale of some script she wrote. And she wanted to shop it around at different um, networks to see if she can have a pickup for that you see what i'm saying so can mm-hmm, she always be thinking about the next dollar can don't want no man she don't want no heavily ha- happily ever after she just wanted her baby she knows she can afford to have a baby by herself and take care of the child that's what she wanted but it's sad it's very sad because i hope she don't do what kenya's mama did to her far as you know mm-hmm. later on down the road regretting that she had the child you know what i'm saying because kenya's just moving in some strange and unusual ways here to keep a storyline and going to keep her in the graces of good uh applause from bravo entertainment for bringing her back but what do y'all think fam what do y'all think get some critical thinking here all right or y'all get some acid trash you're thinking of. it doesn't matter <laughs> I'm saying because I know my family is a mixture of Kenya lovers, uh, Nene lovers, don't care lovers. We have a mixture over here at the family affair. But I like to hear from you. I want to know what you think about this situation. Cause I'm coming back with another video where they talking about Bravo Entertainment. Yes. 
and the Cohen, when they get rid of you and you call yourself leaving and want to come back, honey, they ain't bringing you back as no top biller for the show. Mm-mm, they giving you peanuts. This is what I hear on the streets, y'all. I'm just saying. That's my next video, but y'all probably won't see it till tomorrow, okay? But yes, y'all get down in them comments. Light it up and tell me what y'all think about Miss Kenya Moore having this man treat her like an Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> and not even opening opening the door with any type of charisma or love and compassion. Okay, I'm just saying Ma playing his part and I'm here for Ma. I ain't for Kenya because Kenya doing too much. She doing, always did too much. I always want to tell up shit and then don't want to explain it or take any type of accountability for how she displayed herself. That's what I'm saying. But fam, y'all know y'all going to get me straight. I know y'all going to get me straight, Okay. But that's all it is. It's just we're over here talking, discussing, and making opinions. That's all. Ain't nobody right. Ain't nobody wrong. It's just we over here talking. Okay. But I'll see y'all tomorrow, fam. Y'all have a good night. Get some rest. And say your prayers. And, and say your prayer. Because I don't know why we got Donald Trump still up there. I don't know why we got the president, Donald Trump, still up there. Okay. But, hey, we need to all pray for ourselves because we're going to need it. <laughs> If <laughs> you get another four years up there. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. But you know what? I saw somewhere too, fam. Uh, you know how they have these Simpsons show and the Boondocks and shoot, it was another show. I can't think of it right now. They had like predictions of stuff that's going to happen to people in the future. Well, honey, you remember that casket Donald Trump was laying in? It might be true, honey. Somebody might try to oust his behind out since he don't want to get out on his own. He can be taken out. You know how that goes. You can be taken out now. You might not want to go. But somebody else might want you to go higher up. I'm talking about the elite, baby. All right. But anyway, that's all I had. That's all my side boss. And I will see you next video. Good night, family. Bye. Or I should say, see you later.